I don't know about you, but I'm always looking for new automation ideas. So in this video, I'm going to share with you my five favorite automations that I've got. So the first one I'm going to do, going to go through is some um, automation reminders. So using the calendar to trigger some reminders. The next one I'm going to go through is automating smart appliances with some not notifications built in. Uh, next one is around room presence. So for example, if um, the kids have left the TV on in, in the room, in the lounge, and have just left it running, then I'm automating turning that off. Fourth one is probably one of my personal favorites is my garage roller door automation. And then the last one, which is a fairly new one to me, is casting um, dashboards to my Google hubs in the various rooms. So I'm going to show you how far I've got with that as well. So if any of those sound of interest to you, then please stick around and watch the video. Thanks for watching. So let me take you through how I'm using the Home Assistant local calendar to provide some notifications and reminders. So the first thing that you'll need is to make sure that you've got the calendar integration installed, which is pretty straightforward. I'm not going to spend any time doing this. Um, if you've got Home Assistant, then you can obviously go, uh, go ahead and get the local calendar installed if you think that's going to be of use to you. Um, so this is my calendar and this is my live Home Assistant instance. So you'll see my calendar is quite busy. I'm doing lots of things on there at the moment. So I'll just talk you through some of the examples I've got. So for today, which is the Tuesday, the 16th of November, I've got a couple of uh, appointments coming up. So my daughter's got a ballet um, lesson and my eldest son has got a, a tutor lesson. So I'll have, and I'll show you in a minute, I'll have some reminder notifications that use these diarized entries so the appropriate people in the family get notified. Uh, and then tomorrow, another ballet lesson, another tutor lesson. Um, and then Thursday, another tutor lesson, a couple of tutor lessons for the boys. And then my eldest boy's got explorers. And then Friday, a reminder for my daughter to take a PE kit to school. A reminder for me in the morning to put the bins out. And a reminder for um, another tutor lesson. And then for the boys on Saturday to do their change their bedding, which they quite often forget. So that's just a little bit of an example of, of the calendar and the types of things that I've got in there. But obviously could be used for lots of different things. So this is um, an example notification that I've got around my bins. So if you remember on my calendar, I've got bins being collected on, on a Friday. So last Friday, the 8th, it was my blue bin day, which is my recycling bin. This Friday, it's my black bin, which is general waste. And then on the 22nd, I've got the blue bin again, which is um, recycling. And on a Wednesday, I've got the green bin, which is garden waste. So I can never remember when to take those out and when it's gonna happen. So I've created this automation, a notification automation to tell me, remind me when to do this. I'm not gonna spend huge amounts of time on this one because I have covered this in another video, um, which I'll put in the link below. But just to give you an idea of how it works and what it does, um, so the trigger is the calendar and at 48 minutes before the event in the calendar, this is triggered. Um, you might be thinking 48 minutes is a bit weird, uh, a bit of a weird time frame. So what I found recently is because I'm making such use of this, some of the appointments are starting to clash and overrun each other if I'm triggering, the, trigger, triggering them on the hour or half past the hour. So I'm trying to mix them up a bit and having different times for the reminder. And then um, it's looking to see if the notification helper is still on. And then depending on which um, 
a calendar entry has been triggered, then it'll choose the appropriate option. So option one for blue bin day, which is my recycling bin, option two for the black bin, and which is general waste, and then option three, which is the green bin, which is um, garden waste. So I'll just look at one of these quickly, but you can refer to my other video if you want to go through this in a lot more detail. And it's looking for a message in the calendar. So if I go back to the calendar and look for the bins, so blue bin. So the next time this will be triggered is Friday the 22nd and at 8.15. So 48 minutes before that diary entry, I'll get this notification for the blue bin. Then what it'll do is it'll keep repeating that while this attribute is on. So while the helper toggle switch attribute is on, then I'll keep getting this reminder and I'll get a, my, my wife will get a message on her phone. I'll get a message on my phone and we'll get a broadcast message on um, kind of the communal speakers around the house. Uh, and then I'll get a nice little display on the Google, uh, Google Nest hub in the kitchen with a picture of a bin. And it will repeat that every 30 minutes until I've pulled my finger out and put the bins out. Uh, and then it's the same sort of process for option two and option three. So depending on what's triggering the automation. So if it's the blue bin on a Friday or the blue black bin every other, other Friday or the green bin on a Wednesday, then one of these automations will trigger. So that's the first um, way that I'm using the calendar. So if I move on to the next example, so this is around chores. So um, the kids have all got a few chores that we want them to do around the house. So this is a reminder um, for them to do those chores. And I'm basically using uh, NFC tags as well as part of this. So I've got an NFC tag um, stuck onto a chores board in the kitchen so they know which chores they're supposed to be doing which, which days. Once they've done those chores, then they can start, scan the tag with their mobile phones and it'll stop pestering them to do their chores. So if I take my daughter's um, automation as an example. So when she comes home from school, so I've, again, in another video, and I can put the link below, I've got tile trackers on their school bags so I know where they are when they've left school, when they get home and those sorts of things. So I'm using those tile trackers so I know when Emily arrives at home, in the home zone, then this automation would be triggered. Um, if she hasn't got a school bag, it's not a school day, then it's a time trigger. So, and I'll show you that in a bit more detail in a minute. And then what happens when the tag is scanned. So each of these options have got different trigger IDs associated with them. So it can, so the automation knows which, which automation to go to. If you do want the code for any of these um, automations, then let me know in the comments below and I'll put them up um, so you can download them and, and tinker with them. So what happens then is if option one is triggered, so let's remind ourselves what option one is, is um, do chores one. So option one, do chores one. So that trigger ID. And it will repeat while Emily's um, helper toggle switch is on. It's going to remind that the reminder is only going to be run between 10 a.m. and 9 p.m. I don't want this going off overnight, but if they've done the chores and scan the tag, then this should turn off anyway. So what happens is um, just a little check there to see if there's anything playing on the kitchen display. 
If there is, then pause it while I'm making the announcement to say, Hi Emily, please can you do your chores and tidy your room before dinner or with the no pudding? Scan your tag when you've finished. So as I said, this, the, the tag, the NFC tags are stuck to a notice board in the kitchen so they all know when, what chores to do on what day. So there's notifications going off in the living room, in the bed, child's bedroom, and then in the playroom on the speaker, the same notification. Um, and then there's a delay for 15 seconds. And while those, those notifications are running, and then if the kitchen display was playing prior to those messages going out, then it'll be resumed. Yeah, so if it's paused, then press play so we can continue to listen to whatever we was listening to on that device. And that's going to run every 52 minutes. Again, it's a strange time, but I don't want these automations or these notifications to be clashing with each other. If I do them all on the hour or quarter past or half past, I've found that they start clashing with each other and um, the automations are all trying to send the notifications out at the same time. Um, so that's that option one. Option two is, I say, based on time. So if we look at that one again. So this one is based on time. So a fixed time at 10.08. Then option two is triggered. And while the chores helper is on, and it's between 10 a.m. and 9 p.m., then I want you to do the same thing. So it's, it's, a, it's the same sort of thing, but this time it's for the weekend. So the kids aren't school at the weekend. Still need them to do the chores at the weekend. So if it's Saturday or Sunday, I'll start reminding them to do the chores on a Saturday. And this, this seems to be working fine. It's doing, doing the job, it's making them do their chores. Otherwise, um, as you saw in the message, they, they don't get any pudding after their dinner or no desserts <coughs> unless they've done their chores before dinner. So the last one then is, okay, they've done their chores and we now want the notification to stop. So this is the done your chores trigger ID. So from up here at the top, when the tag is scanned, the NFC tag is scanned with their mobile phone, then it will do done your chores tag, which is number four here. So it's done your chores. So what it will do then is it will turn off the helper. So this automation won't run anymore. And it will send me a message to say Emily Skander tag and chores are done. What I've got as well is, um, you may have seen on one of my other videos is, I've got lots of these automations that rely on those toggle switches. So what I have is, and let me see if I can show you, in here is a reset. So at a particular time in the morning, at two in the morning, then I just go th back through and reset all of these helpers back to on again so the automations will run again the following day. Okay, so I've showed you the tags. And the last one is a fairly straightforward one. So you saw in my calendar, there's lots of notification for kids' tutor lessons. So again, this is for... George's science tutor. So let's see if we can find that in the calendar. So George's science tutor is on a Friday at six o'clock. So there's no way that my wife and I remember all this stuff. So it's, it's really, really valuable to have this information here and the notifications coming out because as well as helping the kids to remember, it's helping us to remember to 
and make sure that we need to drop them off at football or football training uh, on a Monday or take them to ballet on a Tuesday and a Wednesday and so on. So for George's science lesson, so here I've got um, 10 minutes before that's due to start, um, before the event starts, and it's important to, to tick before if you want it to go off before, because I think the default is after, which has caught me out a few times, and then it'll go off again five minutes before. Um, so it's looking for George's science tutor in the calendar so this is friday the 15th here george's so if it finds that match and it knows 10 minutes before six o'clock it's going to send out or it's going to do, do the actions so at 10 minutes before and then five minutes before it's going to carry out the actions and i've got another helper variable here or uh, toggle switch here so they don't tend to have tutor lessons and school holidays so i've got um a, a toggle switch in the dashboard so if it is school holidays i just toggle that off and then the kids don't get any kind of school related notifications and then what it does it broadcasts a message um, to all of the kind of communal speakers to say that you've got a triple, George, you've got a triple science lessons, please make sure you're logged on ready. Uh, and then also in his bedroom is the same message. So depending on where he is on the house, he's going to hear that message and then it just runs that twice and, and drops out and hopefully by that time he'll have logged on. If he's forgotten or ignoring the um, messages, then we can pester him to get logged on as well. So with regard to the calendar and reminders, those are the three automations or notifications that I wanted to show you. Uh, if you do want the code, let me know, but hopefully that was interesting of use. If you're doing anything similar or different, or maybe even using the Google uh, calendar integration, I'd love to hear from you to understand how you're doing that. Um, but thanks for watching. I'll move on to the next section. The washing machine has finished its cycle. What I'll do now is take you through how I've made my appliances like my washing machine, dishwasher, tumble dryer, relatively smart. So on the screen here I've got the <coughs> excuse me, the washing machine plug automation. I won't take you through the dishwasher and tumble dryer because they're pretty much the same process. And then the second part of this is I've introduced another automation. <clears throat> about um, only using the tumble dryer washing machine or dishwasher outside of peak time, so I'll come on to that shortly. Um, so my dishwasher, washing machine, tumble dryer aren't smart devices. They've just got a smart plug that they're plugged into. So I'm using the smart things plug that's got built-in power monitoring, power and energy monitoring. So as long as you've got something that does something similar, and a plug that does something similar, then you could essentially replicate this. So to say, this is looking at my washing machine um, plug. So this is assuming, this automation is assuming the washing machine has run, it's done its cycle, and what I'm doing is looking at the active power use going through that smart plug to see what the load is. So when the load is below, the power load is below five watts, this automation will trigger. <clears throat> so again, it's assuming the plug switched on. If it's the plug switched on, then it continues with the automation. So the first thing it does is turns the plug off, plays a message on my utility room smart speaker to let us know that the washing machine cycle is finished. It sends a notification to my wife's and my mobile phone with the same message to say it's finished. And 
plays a notification on the same of the same message but on a Google hub that we've got in the lounge so if we're in the utility room we'll get the message if we're in the lounge we'll get the message and it's obviously come through on our phone as well so there's lots of ways that we can be notified when that uh, notification is finished so I think on the wife approval ratings this this automation is quite high because before we did this we quite often found that um, we'd forget that we'd had a load in the washing machine and forget to unload it so this is this is a good reminder um, to do that so the second part as I mentioned earlier is I wanted because we're on a, an octopus energy tariff whereby um, we've got peak rate electricity charges between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. so when everyone comes home from work puts the kettle on starts making the dinner electricity is more expensive so I, I wanted to not stop but remind people to say you can run these appliances in these times but just be aware it's expensive electricity I guess we're in kind of a fortunate position that we've got solar panels and battery as well so it probably wouldn't run off the grid it would probably run off my battery in these times but um, it's better to save the energy that's in the battery for more <coughs> important things that has does have to run there so basically this automation triggers when somebody turns on either the tumble dryer washing machine or dishwasher plug and they'll use that they'll do that using the um, Google smart devices they'll tell Google to switch those on um, and then if it's between 4 and 7 p.m. then this is triggered so um, there's a check here to see if the kitchen display is playing any music if it is then it's paused just while this announcement goes out and then I've got um, an announcement saying hello between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. is peak electricity charges please consider running the appliance outside of these hours so it's clear what we need to do there or not do as the case may be and then it also um, does the same on my Alexa that's in the kitchen as well and then there's a delay in the automation just while those notifications are being played and then if the kitchen display the Google display is paused then it will resume whatever was playing on there so the next bit is uh, which I added more recently is um, it's all very well you know somebody not running the appliance between 4 and 7 but then it gets to 7 p.m. in the evening and we'd forget all about it and forget to switch it on so what I've done is you know in, in this automation if somebody's tried to switch on one of these appliances during that high peak rate I've then got a, essentially a, a pause or a delay in this automation until it gets to 7 p.m. when we're back into normal electricity um, charge tariff hours. So at 7 p.m., again, pause kitchen display if it's playing anything, and then play this message. So it's now 7 p.m. We are now outside peak, peak rate electricity rates feel free to switch on the appliance now so just as a reminder and it is it's working so quite often you know we might be sat having dinner it gets to seven o'clock and um, we'll get that announcement think oh yeah i can put the tumble dryer on or dishwasher on or whatever so that that does work as well and then the conditionally if the kitchen display was playing some music or something then it will um, uh, resume the playing on that so that's pretty straightforward and it's pretty effective as well so hopefully that was of use. So I'm now going to show you how I get my things like my TV or my Google hubs to stop playing if no one's detected in the room. So before I go any further, I guess the important thing to say is um, there's some dependencies here. So I'm using Akara FP1s or FP2s to detect presence in the room. 
and I'm also using um, my Amazon devices as well as this actionable notifications integration from Keaton Taylor that I've got uh, on the screen here. So you would need to make sure all those things are in place and you'd need to make sure that you've got this actionable notifications um, up and running as well. I'm not going to document this because it's been well documented already in Keaton's post here and also um, if you're into Home Assistant you've probably come across Mark Watt Tech. Uh, he's done an excellent video on how to get this this working so he actually goes through the process in a YouTube video and talks you through how, how, think, how to get that up and running. So if you want to get this element of it up and running then I suggest you read this and follow Mark's video. Um, but with regards to what I'm doing with it is um, I'm using it to detect, as I'm using the actionable notifications as well as my um, Acara presence detectors to see if anybody's in a room. So it, it got quite frustrating at times where, you know, the kids would be in a room watching TV or listening to something on uh, one of the Google displays and they'd leave the room and not go back and everything was left on. So I'm now using those presence detectors to, to switch things off when the room's been left open for a period of time. So looking at this automation then, we've I'm using um, an Akara FP2 in the living room and it's an actionable notification based on no motion. So using the living room presence detector, if it doesn't detect presence for five minutes, then this automation will trigger. And the dependency is, or the condition is, the TV socket is on, because um, if it's not on, then it's, it's, it doesn't need to be turned off. Um, the other thing I do quite often is in my automations, I have a helper toggle in in the room that it's in. So there's occasions where I've not wanted a particular automation to run. So just by toggling this uh, helper, I can switch the automation off um, by just toggling the, the um, helper to, to an off position as well. Uh, and then what it's doing is it's, it's running, it's using the script that I mentioned earlier from Keaton to uh, execute the actual notification. So in mine, I've got, hello, it looks like the living room is empty. Are you still watching TV? So if there's no response, then another automation will kick in. So using this event ID here, actionable notification, switch underscore off living room underscore, living underscore room underscore TV. So the, that would then trigger this second automation. So it's looking for that event to fire. If there's no response, so if there's nobody in the room, then there's not going to be a response. Um, so there's three actions that the notification would be looking for. It will be a yes, a no, or a non. And again, in Keaton's documentation, there's a full list of um, expected or allowed responses. So if I was in the room and this happened for some reason, I said yes, then this wouldn't trigger because it's it's a response that I haven't created an, an automation for because I don't need anything to happen. If I'm in the room and I say yes, then just carry on as is. If there's no response or uh, um, someone says no, then um, this um, one of these automations would fire. So the first thing that it would do then is turn off the TV socket. I've got a smart socket um, that the TV's plugged into from Lightwave. Uh, it then turns off any lights that are in the room. Turns them off. Turns off the media player. So I've got a Google TV, so I'll switch that off as well. And then it resets the input boolean back to on. 
Uh, and that's as straightforward as that is. So the brains and intelligence is all in that actionable notification, but I think it's, it's really, really useful. Um, if you've got things that are left on in the house, then you can use these act actionable notifications to, to get those turned off. Hopefully that was useful. So I'll now take you through one of my personal favorite automations that I've got, uh, which is for my garage roller door. Um, it is dependent on a Shelly, um, Shelly relay to control the garage door, but I'll take you through it. I do have another video on this as well, which goes through this in a lot more detail, but I'll just give you an overview for now. And if you're interested, you can refer to that video, which I'll leave a link to in the comments below. So as you can see here, I've got lots of Shelly devices installed in my Home Assistant environment. But for the purpose of this, I'm going to be talking about the Shelly Plus 2 PM, which is um, can deal with a motor based system, which obviously the garage door, electric garage door is. So within this, um, I can obviously control the motor going up and down to open and close the door and I can also see the power and energy consumption of the device which is quite handy to see if you're into that sort of thing. Um, from an automation point of view, I'll go through that in a minute, but the, in my dashboard, so within my main dashboard, this doesn't look great on this screen, I tend to use it in a on a mobile phone device, so these kind of all sit underneath each other. But in my garage, I've got control buttons which allow me to open and close the garage just by using the, um, the entities that are available in the control here. So it's just calling those two entities there. One thing that I am playing around with at the moment is this warning notification, which I'll go into in a bit more detail on my next chapter, which is about casting dashboards to my Google devices. So I'll go into that in a, in a bit more in a minute, what, what I'm doing there. Um, and then finally, just from an automation point of view, pretty straightforward stuff. Um, so what I want to do is be notified if the garage roller door has been left open. So if the kids have come home, they've using the mobile phone to open and close the garage door, but they've got to close it. Then if it's been left open for 10 minutes, then I'll get a notification and I'll keep being notified um, on 10 minute intervals until it's closed. So while the garage door is open, will continue to get these notifications on our Amazon devices around the house. I'll get a notification on my mobile phone and my wife will as well. And then we'll also get a notification or the dashboard for the garage will pop up on the living room, Google Nest Hub and the kitchen, Google Nest Hub and it will repeat that process every 10 minutes. So what essentially will happen is because, because the garage door is open, this notification will show up on the screen as well. So if you can imagine this dashboard coming up and I'll, I'll try and show a picture of it, but that, that um, notification only comes up in edit mode. So if, the garage door sensor is open, then I want you to display this message. So essentially we're getting notifications on our mobile phones, we're getting audible notifications through the um, Amazon devices, and also on the screen it's saying, warning, garage door is open, please can you close it? So that's this bit's kind of work in progress at the moment, but I've got kind of high hopes for it. Um, Hopefully that was useful. For more details on this, have a look in the link below. I've gone into a lot more detail in how I've got that um, garage door Shelly device set up.
So for a while now, I've wanted to put some sort of um, control panel in some of the rooms in the house to display dashboards for particular rooms that I'm in. But I haven't been able to kind of get my head around the value of doing that because um, I've kind of always got my mobile phone with me and I can use that to control things as I'm moving around the house. And then it occurred to me a couple of weeks ago, I've actually got Google nest displays uh, in pretty much all of the the main rooms in the house so why not try to use those i guess the problem is that i tend to use those to, for listening to music or because they've got the streaming photo thing on there i didn't want a dashboard loaded up onto that screen permanently because it kind of restricts the use of that so i've been tinkering around and trying to come up with some ways to um to kind of use that display in an effective way. So what I wanted to do now is just kind of show you where I'm up to with this. So if I show you here on the screen, so the, at the moment, um, this is my dashboard and this is kind of how it would look on a mobile phone, mobile device. So it's quite narrow. It's using horizontal stack, I think it is for all the different components. Um, so I'm using some mushroom chips in there and various buttons and things to kind of get into different content that I've got. And then these are the different rooms around the house. So if I go into a room and I'm gonna focus on the living room today, if I can find it. That. And again, this is how it looks on a mobile phone screen which is fine you know i can see the heating lighting my hdmi sync box and various sockets to turn on and off tv remote control and so on and so forth um, now if i put that onto a display it kind of looks a bit of a mess so what i've done is i've taken the opportunity to start redoing some of the displays, some of the dashboards, sorry. So this, what you see in front of you now, is a brand new dashboard that I've created uh, in the last few weeks, which fits lovely onto the um, Google Nest Hub Max, the, one of the bigger screens that I've got in the, the living room. And I'll try and show you a picture of that on the screen now so you can just visualize how that looks. So this, this is where I've kind of got to it, got to with it. So again, I've consolidated down some of the features that I had in my other dashboard just so it's more for the user, for the consumer in the room. So they can obviously um, uh, change the lighting and the color lights, the different sockets again, HDMI sync box, they can configure that, turn it on and off. Um, heating controls, how humid it is, the temperature, um, remote control for the TV, um, using Google TV, and then just some living room information around um, some things that people might be interested in. So whether their sensors are working properly and then some toggle switches. Um, if you're interested to understand how I'm using those, if you have a look at my um, helpers, top four helpers video, then it goes into some details of why I'm, I'm using those to, to help improve my automations. And then the Sonos control there. So I think that looks quite neat on a Google display. So the next thing then is, now I've got that, how am I going to cast it based on the, the way that I want to use my um, Google Nest Hub? I don't want to disturb if music's playing. I don't want the script, the dashboard on the screen all the time because I like to see the photos on my Google Hub scrolling through. So this is kind of the compromise that I've come up with and this is fairly new. I've only kind of been tinkering around with this in the last week so it may evolve over time but I wanted to kind of share it and get people's thoughts. Um, so what I'm going to what I've done is based on motion detected so if one of the sensors motion sensors in the living room de detects motion, then what it will do is check to see if the living room display is playing.
And if it is, then the uh, automation won't go any further because I'm obviously listening to the radio or got some Spotify music playing or something's going on that device. The device is in playing mode, so I don't want um, the dashboard to be cast. However, if that condition doesn't match and there's nothing playing on the hub, then it'll drop through to the then do actions. So what it'll do then is cast the living room dashboard onto my living room display, which is essentially my Google hub. And then, as I said, I don't want it running on there all the time because I like to see the Google photos that I've got that come up scrolling around to, so I can see my um, my family and all that sort of stuff. So I leave it on the screen for five minutes. So hopefully that would be long enough to kind of interact with it if you needed to. So my thinking is you sat in the room, for some reason I don't have my phone with me. I want to change something in the room. I can get up, motion will be detected. The dashboard will be displayed on the screen and I can um, I can then do whatever I need to do. And I've got five minutes to do that. So again, that may be too long, may be too short. I'll need to kind of tinker with that over time. And then the last thing is to, once those five minutes are up, it, it, it kills that dashboard off. So the way that I'm doing that at the moment is simply turning off the, um, the media player functionality. It doesn't affect the Google device. It still displays photos. And if I want to listen to music and things, it'll just fire things up again. So... That's not a problem at all. So that that seems to be working quite well, and um, so that seems to be working quite well. Um, so I'm quite pleased with the results so far. The only thing that's really annoying at the moment is um, I'm trying this out in my master bedroom, and the problem that I've got is when the dashboard is being cast to the device. There's a chime notification, so every time you kind of, if I'm you know, sat in the bedroom or something watch, watching TV and I move, the motion sensor is picking up that movement and going bing, and the dashboard's been displayed, which is really annoying. So my workaround for that at the moment is it's the same same thing around, um, you know, as soon as the motion sensor detects something, and as long as the hub isn't playing, then what I'm doing is setting the volume of the hub to zero so there's no sound. And then once it's set to zero, um, I'm then displaying the master bedroom dashboard on that screen, leaving it on there for five minutes and then turning off the hub once those five minutes are up. Um, so the thing I need to be aware of now is that um, the volume would be set to zero. The thing is, if I if I use this automation to set the volume back up to volume four or five or whatever, then you get that chime notification as well. So at the moment, for my morning alarm that goes off on my Nest Hub in, in uh, 7 a.m. in the morning, what I'm doing is getting that automation to set the volume back up to um, number four before it starts playing the radio to wake me up in the morning. So that's kind of where I'm up to at the moment. I have looked at alternate solutions and there are things out there. So there's this continuously casting dashboards solution that um, it might be worth having a look at if you want to um, use some of these features in that. It looks as though it's... Um, yeah, it's a hacks add-on. So you could use that if you don't want to kind of bake something yourself. Um, as I say, that's kind of in its infancy. I'd love to get some feedback and comments on that, whether you're doing things in a different way. Um, I don't know why I didn't come up with this earlier. You know, I've got the displays in all of my rooms, so why not use them for the dashboard? So hopefully over time I'll get these new dashboards all built up and I'll start um, getting them in the different rooms around the house. Hopefully that's useful. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching the video to the end. Hopefully you've found some use in it and something that you can take away and use in your own home assistant installation. 
Um, if you see any obvious things where I can improve or change things based on what you're doing, I'd love to hear your comments on that. Um, if there was things in here that was useful of, and of value, then please consider liking and or subscribing. It kind of helps me, helps the channel and motivates me to do some more videos. But I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in another video. Thank you. Bye.